Hello and welcome to Triage, timely conversations for healthcare professionals, a podcast created and produced by KNL Gates. Each episode is designed to highlight important developments in health law and analyze the impact on our clients and friends of the firm. We hope you enjoy this podcast. Hello, my name is Darlene Davis. I'm a partner in the firm's Research Triangle Park office. I'm joined by my colleague, Andy Ruskin, also a partner in the firm's healthcare and FDA practice from our DC office. In this episode of Triage, we're going to talk about the hospital price transparency rule as we approach the end of the first year of its implementation. Andy, can you give a short summary of the hospital price transparency rule that was effective January 1st of this year and explain how it relates to CMS's prior guidance on posting of the hospital charge master? Sure, Darlene. I'd I'd be happy to. Thank you so much for inviting me to talk to you today about this particular topic. So the price transparency rule is the latest iteration of a multi-year attempt by CMS to increase uh, transparency regarding hospital charges in a way that they hope would be useful for consumers of healthcare, i.e. patients. The latest iteration involves a a pretty elaborate process, some would even call it cumbersome, involving uh, taking two different steps. So the first step involves taking all of your pricing for all of your quote unquote, items and services, and uh, making uh, putting it all in machine-readable format. And you know, although uh, CMS talks about standardized charges, what they really do is, is they break it down into a number of different ways to slice and dice the data. They, they ask for your gross charges. They ask for your negotiated charges for partic- uh, each individual payer. They look for your minimum charge for a particular item and service and your maximum charge, and then your discount to cash rate. So CMS is really trying to dig in into um, uh, the data any which you know every which way anyone could possibly imagine wanting to use it. So that's the larger data ask that CMS has. And then secondly, CMS has a requirement that hospitals post their charges for 300 what are called shoppable services, services that a typical healthcare consumer may actually want to uh, elect to, to use a particular hospital for. So the latter, of course, sounds like it's a lot more useful. And by the way, CMS says if you have an accumulator that is already on your website, then you are excused from going to some of their more cumbersome rules with respect to the the shoppable services provisions of its uh, price transparency rule. So if you don't comply, then CMS will ultimately perhaps impose penalties on you. And we'll talk about that in a short bit. But that is, in a nutshell, what the rule is. This is a far cry from what CMS has previously required, which is is that you make your... uh, your charge description master charges, your CDM charges, as they're called, available uh, on your website. And many would argue, and the American Hospital Association has argued, that that's really all that is required by statute. Uh, All of this, by the way, originates with a three-sentence provision from the Affordable Care Act in 2010, which only really talks about standardized charges and does not go into anything close to the depth that CMS has gone into in terms of its rule. But that being said, HA has challenged this particular rule and has lost all the way up to the appellate court in the D.C. Circuit. So, Well, thanks for that summary of the rule and how it relates to the prior guidance. Say a hospital adds services or new locations throughout the year that result in the information posted in response to the rule changing. What is the hospital's obligation to update that information? Yeah, good question, Darlene. So you're only required to update it once a year, and it's probably going to be a long time before most hospitals, you know, comply generally, but especially uh, with getting into a routine of updating it once a year. But you are supposed to update your data that you make available on your website uh, at least once a year in order to comply with the rule. Great, thanks. And you had mentioned earlier the potential for enforcement actions for failure to comply. What are the types of enforcement actions CMS can take? Yeah, uh, so CMS can start by issuing you a warning, can also ask for a corrective action plan, and ultimately CMS can impose fines. The the current fines that are in effect are a maximum of $300 per day. So the maximum fine, of course, over the course of a year, therefore, is roughly $100,000, uh, a little bit more than that, obviously. So so that's so that's um, where, where the rule stands today, but we can certainly talk about uh, what CMS is proposing to do going forward. Yeah, what is CMS proposing? Could you talk a little bit about that? 
Yes. So, good question, Darlene. So, currently in the CMS's uh, annual rulemaking cycle for its outpatient rule, CMS proposed dividing the world into hospitals that are under 30 beds and those that are above 30 beds. For those that are above 30 beds, the penalties can be as large as $5,500 a day. So, that's quite a substantial increase from the $300 a day that, that we're currently at meaning that hospitals uh, can go all the way up to over $2 million a day in penalties if the proposed rule goes into effect as final. Okay, yeah, that is quite a bit more than what is currently in the rule from a civil monetary penalty perspective. We've heard that hospitals have been getting letters from CMS related to compliance with the hospital price transparency rule. What steps should hospitals take if they receive such a letter? A lot of hospitals have been non-compliant with the rule. Probably 70% of all hospitals have taken probably no, no steps whatsoever to comply with the rule. So the hospitals that even comply a little bit, such as, for instance, making available data on shoppable services available on their website, would presumably be slightly better off than those that are not. But we're learning about hospitals that have taken some but not all of the steps necessary, and they're starting to get letters. You really have only two choices. You could either just simply decide, forget it, I'm, I still don't care, or you could, uh, you could come into material compliance. What constitutes full compliance is still a matter of debate, uh, given that there are a lot of, uh, of gaps in, in any sort of new regulatory regime. And, but you can come into material compliance by uh, creating machine-readable data that CMS has talked about, which generally involves hiring a vendor to go through your data to try to figure out what, what all this is, because it's an extremely cumbersome process. But that's an alternative, or alternatively, you could just take your chances and, and not comply, and, and then, you know, eventually, presumably, CMS is going to levy penalties of, at least for now, 100000 But if the proposed rule is finalized as is, then come January 1, CMS would have the authority uh, to, uh, to impose penalties of upwards of $2 million, and probably could do that for noncompliance that predates the, the final rule. And so as we're, you know, talking about these proposed changes to the CMPs effect that, that if they go into effect would be effective January 1st of next year. What do you anticipate in regard to CMS enforcement efforts in this area going forward? Yeah, no, that's a fantastic question because everyone is everyone was assuming that CMS would take a long time to to get around to to enforcement of this because this was such a a large uh, a large bite uh, to, to to be chewing off. And so that being said, letters are going out. You know, K and L Gates has had a number of clients receive these letters, so we know that that they're going out. And of course, our experience is just anecdotal, so we assume that there are a lot of these letters going out. So the enforcement climate's already changing even now, but once CMS has some real ammo in its war chest, it's probably going to go even deeper into enforcement. And so we would anticipate, especially having one at the appellate court level, and there being uh, no appeal to the Supreme Court on this, that CMS is going to go with Augusta with this. To the extent that enforcement has not been as, as robust as one would have expected thus far, it's because we had a change in administrations. Even with the change of administrations, there's not been a clawing back of this policy. In fact, it's actually, as we discussed a minute ago, we've seen uh, an increased desire to put real teeth into this regulatory regime. And so we should assume that the current administration, therefore, is wholly endorsing what the prior administration did in terms of putting this in place to begin with, uh, including going through machine-readable data for all of your items and services with all the five different data points that CMS is requiring. So we should expect increased enforcement activity in this in this regard. Well, thanks. And and so those, you know, that definitely gives our listeners some things to think about as they're going forward. Are there any final thoughts you'd like to leave our listeners with? Yeah, it's not all bad. I mean, uh, to the extent that uh, a health system was already thinking about how can we hold our patients near and dear to us and and make ourselves more user friendly for them, the shoppable services functionality on your website may very well do exactly that. And not to mention, you, know, you may very well be able to you know find out information about what your competitors are doing and what kinds of pricing they're getting from uh, some of the same payers. And so you you know, there's a lot of information you want your your patients. Seven, there's information you could benefit from as well. So if you're going to be stuck with this very cumbersome, elaborate regulatory process, then you know at least try to you know turn the lemons uh, into lemonade. 
on that note, thank you so much for your time today, Andy. And thanks listeners for hearing us discuss the hospital price transparency rule. Thanks again for listening to Triage, timely conversations for healthcare professionals. New episodes are available for download through Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. By subscribing to Triage, you will receive timely notifications for each new episode. Also, if you have any topics you would like to hear discussed on Triage, please don't hesitate to email triagesupport at klgates.com. We would love to hear from you.